How statistics can be misleading. Hello, my name is Alex Does F1 Stuff, and welcome back to another hopefully short random F1 episode. And today we are looking at the very sort of fabric of my channel, statistics. I've built this channel on stats, random stats, any sort of stats possible. So this is perhaps shooting myself in the foot a little bit by talking about how they can be extremely misleading. So we're going to be looking at a particular topic and only a slim bit of a particular topic. And the question is this, who was Hamilton's best McLaren teammate for qualifying? So, on the one hand, you have Fernando Alonso, two-time Formula One world champion, did one season in 2007. On the other hand, you have Heike Kovalainen, zero-time Formula One world champion, did two seasons, 2008 and 2009. Then, on the final hand, if you have three, uh, you have Jensen Button, one-time Formula One world champion from 2010 to 2012. And the general view of most people is Alonso. When you hear those three names, you think Alonso. And then you also think Button. You don't necessarily think of Heike Kovalainen, mainly because that's a name that sort of gets a little bit lost in the F1 world, as nothing really happened during his career, unless you are AWS's insights and you pop him in the top 10 along with Jarno Trulli. So let's just dive on in to some data and how exactly they can be misleading. The very first graph that we're going to be taking a look at is the percentage of times out-qualified by Hamilton. I've had to do it as a percentage simply because they did varying different seasons, so simply putting Alonso's number up wouldn't make any sense against Hakey's and Button's uh, numbers, so I've had to do it as a percentage of races rather than their physical number. So the percentage of times that Jensen Button was out-qualified by Hamilton was 75% over three years. Heike Kovalainen, 66% over two years, and Fernando Alonso, 47% over one year. So just by looking at this graph, you would have to say that Fernando Alonso is the better teammate to Lewis Hamilton in qualifying. However, if I go back to the graph and we just flip this question on its head and we look at the percentage of times that they out-qualified Hamilton, it is just another visual representation of looking at the exact same question. So Fernando Alonso, 53%, Heike Kovalainen, 34 and Jensen Button, 25 Both of these graphs show exactly the same information. But the easiest one to read and the easiest one to understand as to who is the better teammate is the graph on the right. However, it is extremely misleading, but still technically correct if you were to include the graph on the left as it still shows you exactly what you need, you just have to understand a little bit more. As in there's an extra level of thinking that you have to go through. You've got to work out, oh, Jensen Button is the bigger number, but the bigger number means he's slower. You have to do an extra level of thinking, whereas the graph on the right is just a simple, straightforward, bigger, bigger bar, better, driver. However, it is not just as simple as this. It never is. There are more factors that we can look at for qualifying, and they are such. We can look at the specific gap to the teammate when Lewis Hamilton was in front. Now, this is a average gap over their seasons as teammates, excluding any outlier races uh, for the rain, etc, etc. So, Lewis Hamilton's average gap to Jensen Button was just over half a second, his average gap to Heike Kovalainen was just under half a second, and his average gap to Fernando Alonso was just under three tenths of a second. So again, this data does support Fernando Alonso being the better qualifier out of his three McLaren teammates, and this still puts Jensen Button at the bottom. However, again, we can flip this question on its head. We can spin the criteria of what the statistics are looking for. We can change it to their average gap behind. How far behind Lewis Hamilton was whenever he was out-qualified. And that gap for Heike Kovalainen was eight tenths of a second. 
For Fernando Alonso, that was four and a half tenths, and for Jensen Button, that was 3.6 tenths of a second. And now this sort of changes everything, because we've now got a graph that shows that Heike Kovalainen, whenever he was in front of Lewis Hamilton, absolutely smoked him. He went two times faster, almost two times faster than Lewis Hamilton did whenever he was in front. Now they were fairly even across their qualifying head to head. It was 66-34, a lot more even than 75-25, but not as even as 47-53. But to have that big of a differential is a little bit surprising. And then we have Fernando Alonso in the middle of that group. Now, you would expect if he was truly the better qualifier, you would expect him to have an even bigger gap to Lewis than Kovalainen. And again, Jensen Button is at the bottom of this pile. So this video doesn't look particularly good for Jensen Button, but it is illustrating a point. But if I just group all of these graphs together so we can all just pop them on one little screen so there's no need to go chopping and changing, it is a very interesting question to look at. And if I was to show you any one of these graphs and just the one graph, you can be swayed to think slightly differently. And this is why in most of my statistics videos, I refrain from giving my own opinion on the data that I create, as opinions can extremely, extremely sway your mind and influence the decision of what you are seeing. As well, I will always try and come up with different angles to come at the question with. I will always try and provide many different graphs, many different interpretations of the question to come at it from all sorts of different angles to present different ways of thinking. And that's exactly what I've done for this very basic question. It seems like a very basic question, but it is, it is in fact extremely complex. So I hope that gives you a little bit of an insight into how statistics can easily, very easily, and considering the fact that the people that create statistics understand them extremely well, they are easily able to manipulate them to fool, fool is a bit of a harsh word, but to influence people that may not necessarily fully understand the statistics. But that is all I've got for you today, guys. I hope you have enjoyed this short, slightly different video, and I will catch you in the next episode with whatever and whenever I decide to make it. I'll see you guys then.